Greetings, everyone. It's Closer Look time again here on the Multimedia Chronicles. Today we're going to be checking out the three sets I have of the British television science fiction series, The Tomorrow People. Yeah, you've probably seen this on my shelf for a very long time, and I've never done a video about it, so I thought, why don't I do a video about it? So this is that video that I'm doing about it. So yeah, The Tomorrow People, today on A Closer Look on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. So The Tomorrow People was not produced by the BBC. Contrary to popular belief, not every single British show in the world was made by the BBC. Now, this one was actually done by Thames Television and ran from 1973 to 1979. There were eight series total for a grand total of 68 episodes. I realize 73 to 79 doesn't actually equal eight years, so I'm guessing there was a few years in there where they had more than one season during the year. Anyway, uh, it essentially follows the adventures of a young group of people, a very special group of people that are born with special abilities. It's kind of reminiscent of the X-Men, actually, where as soon as they start to come into puberty, these powers manifest, one of which is the ability to jaunt or teleport from one location to another. Uh, the term jaunt was actually lifted part and parcel from the science fiction works of Alfred Bester. Um, not the Alfred Bester that was the evil Psycop in Babylon 5. That was actually a very deliberate reference to the science fiction author of the same name. It essentially is a series that's structured very similar to how Doctor Who was structured back in the 70s. Namely, it's a series of serialized stories. So each story is between four and five episodes each. Some of the later ones were shorter. Or they did two or three episodes each. But uh, essentially the same kind of structure, where it's it's a series of serials, and there is an overarching continuity over the course of the entire series. Now, I purchased these on eBay a while back, and uh, basically got them really cheap. I've been wanting them for a while anyway, because, you know, I do love me some British science fiction, uh, especially from the 70s. That's just, uh, I think, a real golden period for entertainment in general. It was just music, television, sci-fi, everything. Great stuff in the 70s. And, um, and then one day I decided to start watching them, and I just powered through the whole series. I watched, like, all 68 episodes over the course of, like, a week and just had an absolute blast with it. Um, it has been revived a few times over the years. There was a series done in the 90s. I think it was on Nickelodeon. Um, I have seen a few episodes of that. It was okay. It wasn't bad. Um, and then there was a revival done fairly recently as well, which I think only lasted, like, half a season but um, I, I saw a little bit of that as well, and it also looked quite good. But I honestly have not seen all of either of those revivals. I just kind of checked them out out of curiosity. Um, but, you know, call me a purist. Nothing's ever going to equal the original. <laughs> it's just as, as low budget and cheesy as it may appear to some of you now. There's just a certain charm about it that I don't think will ever be duplicated. One other thing I should mention about The Tomorrow People is it has a very catchy and memorable theme song, which was composed by Dudley Simpson. Now that is a name that may be familiar to Doctor Who fans, because Dudley Simpson was THE composer for Doctor Who throughout the entirety of the 70s, right from John Pertwee's first story all the way up to... Uh, the the last story of Tom Baker's second last season. So right up until 1979. So basically 10 years worth of Doctor Who came out of the, the imagination of this one man. And yeah, I don't know, I can't remember if he did all of the music for the show or just the theme song. But anyway, great theme song, very memorable, a lot of fun, very trippy intro, and just a great show. I mean, if you love British sci-fi from the 70s like I do, you, you got to check this out. This is one of the other big ones that people really remember and love. Um, yeah, so good stuff. All righty, so without any further ado, let's head on down to the Black Void, and we'll take a look at uh, the packaging and episodes and contents and everything for all three of these lovely sets that were released by A&E many moons ago and are now long out of print, so good luck finding them. Okay, so here we have the first set of The Tomorrow People from A&E. Uh, and he released this in three box sets back in 2006. Uh, needless to say, long out of print. But hey, hunt around. You might get lucky. Uh, so the Tomorrow People, of course, ran for eight seasons, starting in 1972. Hey, 
that's the year I was born, and uh, ran until 1979. Now, the first few seasons were usually around 13 episodes or so, and then as the years wore on, the seasons gradually got shorter and shorter. So, all told, there's... Um, I don't know, 60-something episodes. There's not. I think there's like 67 episodes total. So there's not that many. Um, you could easily marathon this. In fact, that's what I did when I got these. Uh, one day I just decided, hey, I'm going to watch the Tomorrow People. So I did. I just sat down and I powered through this whole series in the span of like a week. And it was awesome. I loved it. I, I don't know why I was so harsh on this series when it originally aired on uh, YTV. I think I just kind of saw it as a Doctor Who wannabe because of the structure of it, how it's, you know, like here it's five-part story, four-part story, um, because it was structured very much like Doctor Who, where it was a series of serials. And, uh, yeah, so nothing to write home about. We're looking at the We're looking at these backwards, aren't we? Yeah, this is disc four. All right, so let's uh, let's let's go through this the right way around. Hold on a second. Here's disc one. All right, and there we go. Uh, artwork is exactly the same on all of the sets, all of the discs. Oh, hey, an A and E TV on DVD catalog, circa 2006. Let's take a quick look at this, shall we? So A and E was doing a ton of TV on DVD sets at the time. They were like the go-to uh, label for that. So look at this. They got like all the Jerry Anderson stuff. They got the Avengers. They got the Prisoner, Monty Python's Flying Circus, Mr. Bean. Um, the, I, I have a few of these sets, actually. They got Profiler. Uh, is it? Uh, oh, Brooklyn South. Yeah, I have that set. I used to have that Monty Python set. Uh, my mom had uh, some of the Avengers sets. I used to have the Blu-ray set of the Prisoners. Sadly, I don't anymore. I'm so shooting myself for selling that. Um, I really need to get that again. More Jerry Anderson stuff. Like a ton of Jerry Anderson stuff. Holy Moses. They were like the Jerry Anderson labels. Most of these have since been re-released by Shout Factory, by the way. Uh, more Avengers. We got the new Avengers. That's the one with Joanna Lumley in it. And... Uh, yeah, great stuff. We've got Danger Man, The Saint, Peter Gunn, Secret Agent. Oh, yeah, fantastic. And, uh, yeah, so great stuff. Gotta love a &E. I don't know what they're doing these days. I haven't heard much about them in recent years. So this uh, this disc has The Slaves of Jedekiah, five-part opener. Uh, Jedekiah was kind of, uh, I don't know, think of him as the master of the Tomorrow People. He was one of the big recurring villains who came back many, many times to uh, plague our heroes. And this is the disc that has all the extras on it. We've got uh, commentary with Nicholas Young, Peter Von Clark, and Sammy Windmill on the Slaves of Jedekiah. The Origins of the Tomorrow People, cast biographies, interactive menus, and scene selection. I have been told by many people that the commentary track on these is absolutely hilarious to listen to because it is very clear that they are imbibing of some alcoholic beverages as they are doing the commentary and get progressively more sauced as it proceeds. So, um, yeah, good times. I have not actually listened to this yet. I completely forgot about that, but uh, I, I definitely need to do that at some point, maybe, uh, maybe on the next rewatch. I'll give the commentaries a listen as well. So this is uh, disc two, which has uh, the Medusa Strain, four-parter, and the Vanishing Earth. So that wraps up season one. Again, exactly the same artwork inside. And then uh, here we've got disc three. Again, exactly the same artwork. And this has the blue and the green, five-part opener for season two. Really cool stuff. If you like uh, the work of Alfred Bester, I think you will enjoy this because it uh, seems to shamelessly borrow some concepts from Alfred Bester, not the least of which is the, the concept of jaunting, where the Tomorrow People can uh, teleport themselves from place to place. And that's something, e even the terminology is straight out of the Alfred Bester book. So, uh, and then here we have A Rift in Time and The Doomsday Men, both uh, four-part stories there. So that wraps up set one, which gives us seasons uh, one and two. So here we have set two, which contains the third, fourth, and fifth seasons. But you'll notice, same number of discs, so already we're starting to get some slightly shorter seasons. And then here we go on the back, and then on the spine. All lined up, these actually look pretty cool on your shelf. I'll show you when we're all done here. All right, so taking a look here, so we have... 
This is disc one? Yes. Okay, disc one of set two. There we go. And much like this first set, this is the one that has all the extras on it. So we've got commentary with Nicholas Young, Peter Von Clark, and Anne Kurthoys on Secret Weapon. Uh, the Origins of, of Tomorrow People, Part 2, Cast Biographies, Interactive Menus, and Scene Selection. I'm so glad they included Interactive Menus and Scene Selection. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is 2006 that these came out. Oh, actually, 2005. So it's between 2005 and 2006 they released these sets. And really, that's still a thing? Interactive Menus and Scene Selection? Really, A&E? Come on. So here we have Secret Weapon, which is a four-parter, and Worlds of Way, which is a three-parter. Which, uh, I think that wraps up season three? Is that it? Was it 12 episodes that time? I don't know. Anyway. Okay, then here we have disc two, which wraps up season three. So season three was the last season to be a full 13 episodes. There we go. So we have, uh, the three-part A Man for Emily. And the three-part The Revenge of Jedekiah. Yes, so Jedekiah... Finally makes a return there to uh, plague our heroes once again. Very cool stuff. And then here we have season four. I think this is all of season four. Seven episodes. So we have disc three, which has two stories, a four-parter, or a three-parter and a four-parter, respectively. We've got One Law and Into the Unknown. And we take a look there. There we go. Like I said, not not much to look at in terms of the artwork. It's just the same design on all of them. And then, uh, yeah, and then the fifth season, we basically have three two-parters. So we have same artwork on the front there, and then on the back, we have the uh, Dirtiest Business, A Much Needed Holiday, and Heart of Sogoth, which is the... Uh, conclusion of that season and i noticed actually the episodes seem to have individual titles at this point as well i don't think they did originally yeah no originally they were just like part one part two etc uh but on this season they've actually got individual titles for the episodes and they started that uh looks like they started that in season three or did they start that on season sorry i'm going all over the place here i just i have to know Okay, no, season two. Season two, they actually started giving individual titles to the episodes, even though they were still uh, a, a serialized story, much like the first season. Uh, oh, hold on a second. And then here we have set three, which contains seasons six, seven, and eight to wrap up, wrap up the season, or wrap up the series, rather. And there we go. Very nice. That's upside down. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here we've got, uh, yeah, this is disc one of set three. There we go. <clears throat> oh, look, another catalog. Sweet. Let's check it out. Hold on. Oh, we got Highway to Heaven now. We got Benny Hill, Dr. Quinn, Wind in the Willows, Homicide Life on the Street. Oh, they've added a whole bunch of stuff. This is just all in the span of a year, like between the last catalog we looked at. Look at that, Dr. Quinn, Homicide. Uh, again, a lot of these have been re-released by other companies since. There's all the Jerry Anderson stuff again. Oh, Neil Game is Neverwhere, check that out. I think that actually got a new adaptation recently. Danger Mouse, I actually do have the Danger Mouse uh, collection that they put out. And Tomorrow People, right there. Very nice. Randall and Hopkirk deceased. Oh, wow. Oh, Quatermass. Oh, my God. Yeah. I re oh, Hammer House of Horror. Great stuff. Quatermass, very, very much like a proto-Doctor Who. Uh, he was the first sort of, I don't know, scientist fighting the forces of the supernatural and alien, you know. <laughs> Great stuff. Nigel Neal, classic, classic stuff. Uh, so there we go. So we have... On uh, oh yeah, this one. This is uh, so season six. We have the Lost Gods, Hitler's Last Secret, and the Thargon Menace. Hitler's Last Secret. Like this is you can tell that they were starting to like stretch for ideas a little bit. We have Hitler come back from supposedly coming back from the dead, but it's actually an alien in disguise, making everybody think that he's Hitler because you know why not. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's, just watch it, you'll see, it makes perfect sense when you see it. Alright, then here we got disc two, there we go, 
This, I think, is the rest of Season 6. Uh, we have Castle of Fear, Achilles' Heel, and the Living Skins. Hmm. And these are uh, these are all two-parters. Nothing but two-parters at this point. Oh, and then look at this. Okay, I guess that was yeah, I guess that was season six and seven. So then here, season eight, we have an epic four-part saga, War of the Empires, and I think that's the finale actually. Yeah, it is. That's the finale because the last disc is all bonus material. It's all extras on here. So what do we got? We got Beyond Tomorrow documentary. Glimpse behind the scenes of the Tomorrow people with this unique 1997 documentary. In candid interviews, the original cast reflects on the development of the series from its inception in 1972 to its final episode in 1979. Interviews. Nicholas Young. Mr. Young provides insight into his new series and his work since starring on the Tomorrow people. The Tomorrow People expert Jackie Clark. A Tomorrow People expert discusses the series' effect on fans and the 30-year cast reunion. And finally, Nigel Rhodes, not interviewed for the 97 documentary. Mr. Rhodes tells about his time on Tomorrow People and his life since. So there you go. Quite a nice uh, selection of stuff if you're a fan of the show. So there you go. So actually, these three discs made up three seasons. So season six, season seven, season eight. You can see uh, how it just kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter as time went on. But uh, what can you do? That's the way it goes sometimes. So if we take a look at them all side by side there. There we go. Very nice. Just pull it back a little bit for you. There we go. So that's the three sets. Actually, it looks pretty snazzy. I mean, a very you know, simple design that uh, looks quite nice on the shelf. And then if we stack them, you can see how they look with uh, the keep cases facing out. Quite nice, color coded for each set. Ugh. This is what they look like on the top. This is what they look like on the bottom. Yeah, they actually have the logo and everything on the bottom too. And then finally, this is how I like to have them on the shelf. I have them like that, with the backs uh, facing out. Because then it looks nice and snazzy. You've probably seen these sitting on my Doctor Who shelf for years. Well, at long last, you've had a closer look at them. So there you go. The Tomorrow People. 70s sci-fi at its finest. Alrighty, that is it from me to you for now. So hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. And I'll see you next time. So until then, sayonara. Dates were confusing on the set here, so. Oh, <laughs> I have to check the shorts after that one. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I've been streaming so long, the chicken has fully digested and is waiting to escape now.